Well, good morning, ma'am. And isn't it a lovely morning? Up yours, digger. Back in 1974, Warner Brothers produced one of the funniest pictures ever filmed, the Blazing Saddles. However, you will be shocked at what many people don't know about the Blazing Saddles behind the scenes. Also, as an actor, we have to observe behavior. I've always observed behavior of all kinds of people, specifically older people. I've really been fascinated by that. Today, we are about to unravel the mystery surrounding the enigmatic film. Join us as we explore some of the hidden scenes of Blazing Saddles that never made it to the public. An unusual appearance. There are countless unique things about the Blazing Saddles 1974 film, and one of them is its impressive premiere, which we must see happens to be one of the most significant movie premieres of all time. For many reasons, this particular premiere defied all expectations regarding success. Interestingly, the event took place at the Pickwick Drive-In back in 1974 and soon became the talk of the town. We all understand that a movie premiere is such a big event involving a luxury show. As a drive-in premiere, many of us would expect its place to be littered with some of luxury's most expensive cars and other modernized demonstrations. But that didn't happen at the Blazing Saddles premiere. Instead, what we found attainable was celebrities appearing on horseback to honor the Western theme of the film. It will interest you that only those on horseback were allowed into the vicinity. During the events, those who spoke had to be attached to saddle pommels. If that wasn't enough to wow us all, the studio also created a fashionable horse fatality bar where horse d'oeuvres were served to guests. The overall event was successful because it saw the happy Mel Brooks, the film's director, write a letter to appreciate the publicist responsible for the idea. While the premiere was a hot success, however, it took place against a backdrop of many criticisms. Starting from the Warner Brothers chairman, Ted Ashley, a lot of dissatisfaction was expressed over the film's preview. Following this, Ashley did not hesitate to send a memo to Brooks, asking that many things be eliminated from the film. On the elimination list was every N-word used in the movie alongside every other flatulent sound effect. You've got to take it all out, Ashley told Brooke. It would be a lie to say this review didn't hit Brooks hard. However, Brooks adamantly did nothing in line with this memo from Ashley. Instead, he crumpled his note, throwing the whole wade into the waste bin. Later, talking about his reaction to the event, he stated, I didn't cut a sentence or a word or even an expression on anybody's face. We must give it to Brooks for this act of bravery or stubbornness, because we have the funny blazing saddles that everyone knows today. You're going downhill. In the blazing saddles, one famous scene left everyone who saw it laughing hard. Here we are talking about the scene where a brutish Mongo had gotten into a head-on confrontation with a fellow horse rider who challenged him for parking his horse in a no-parking zone. Mongo's response was epic, though it could have been better. Responding to the challenger, we see Mongo walking towards the man and his horse most gently, albeit with the wrong intention. Following this, Mongo clobbered the horse, thus sending them both crashing down. But still, on the hilarious scene where Mongo clobbered a horse, you might have thought it funny, but not everyone is on the same page. The scene received heavy criticism from a couple of people who were concerned about the mistreatment of animals. While their concerns are valid, we must note that Brooks had made sure no animals were injured in an attempt to create that scene. This is because the animals in the film are all well-trained and taught to fall on command. Hence, no animals were hurt even though they acted that way. However, for the human rights advocate and those dissatisfied with that scene, Brooke could have used a less violent scene that would not send the wrong idea to the public. Getting fired. Let's stop at the point where there is an excellent twist in the smooth running of Blazing Saddles filming. For those who followed the show from the beginning to the end, you will find out that the character who played the Waco kid at the beginning of the film was different from the guy we later got to see playing the later part of the role. Well, this is because someone got fired. Gig Young played the original Waco kid. Featuring in the first part of In the Film, he was pretty good, especially in that episode when he drunkenly dangled from his bed to berate Bart. For everyone who saw this scene, Gig Young was best for the role of Waco Kid, but what happened next surprised everyone. 
Instead of flourishing in the character, Gig Young got fired for being inebriated and not just acting to be. Sadly for him, he was replaced by Gene Wilder, who soon settled in as the Waco Kid. Young was unhappy about this turnout of events and sued the studio for a breach of contract. From this incident, it is clear that while Blazing Saddles was successful, what many people don't need to learn about the film is that it faced many challenges from the cast. Slim Pickens. While some cast members created problems for Brooks, other characters were passionate about their roles. Here, an excellent example of such a cast member is Slim Pickens. We agree that Blazing Saddles is a cowboy film. However, Slim Pickens took his cowboy character to another level. Acting as Taggart, the bully gang leader, Slim Pickens did not take his role lightly but wanted to embody the character in the best way possible. Now how far he went will amaze you. Slim Pickens had to sleep outdoors as a real cowboy would embody the character entirely. If that wasn't enough, he went through all of this, keeping his Winchester at his side so that he could be reminded of his criminal personality. This is quite passionate of him. The Meaning of a Name Undeniably, one of the mysterious things about the Blazing Saddles is its name, but it will amaze you how that name came about in the first place. Interestingly, finding a suitable title for the film was a problematic aspect of the production. Different title suggestions arose at this point to save the day, but most ended up unlocking. Initially, the first title candidate for the film was 10X, inspired by Malcolm X, in the end. However, this title was dropped and replaced with Black Bart, which was not considered fitting eventually. Following this, the scriptwriters began to consider naming the film The Purple Sage. However, a conclusion on the film title was finally reached nowhere else but in the bathroom when Brooks was showering. The idea of naming the film Blazing Saddles came to him like a flash, and when he discussed it with his wife, she agreed that it was perfect for the film. Bam! And that's how the pretty name of Blazing Saddles came about. What all of these shows is that the naming process of the film remains a very vital part of its overall end product look, Becoming Under the Sky. It's always interesting to watch Blazing Saddles and discover Sheriff Bart is unpopular amongst the townspeople. In the movie, one of the most hilarious scenes that emphasizes this is when Sheriff Bart has to hold up a gun to its head to ensure the townspeople let him go. This was quite a hilarious scene, but do not make the mistake of thinking that it is all jokes and nothing near realistic. An event inspired this hilarious scene in Mel Brooks's childhood. As a child, Brooks tried stealing a water gun and a pack of gum from a store. Of course, he was caught, and when the storekeeper attempted to stop him, he pointed the water gun at him and threatened to pull the trigger. Now we know that that wasn't so wise of Brooks. However, we could see the scene in Blazing Saddles as reenacting that old experience of childishness. At this point, the Waco kid thoughtfully added a line outside of the script to console Bart, saying, You've got to remember that these are just simple farmers. These are people of the land, the common clay of the New West. You know, morons. Here you know. Moron was ad-libbed, and it sure left Cleveland Little genuinely laughing. Indeed, when we look at all the intriguing scenes captured in the movie Blazing Saddles alongside other phenomenal works of Brooks, like the producers, it is clear that Brooks is a pretty talented director. Thus, when creating a magical experience for viewers in Blazing Saddles as he did in the producers, the Warner Brothers were confident in Brooks's abilities. However, things needed to look more positive for Blazing Saddles in its early viewings. The executives did not find the movie funny and did not receive it well. This certainly was not encouraging for Brooks. However, he didn't doubt that Blazing Saddles would succeed. Finally, Warner Brothers released the movie, and we're happy they did after receiving good early reactions. Seeing how successful Blazing Saddles had gotten in reality, it is hard to believe some weird facts about the film. For example, it sounds so odd when we tell you that the film was close to being discarded even before its debut. It took Brooks a lot to convince the studio to release the movie. According to the head of distribution, it's simply too vulgar for the American people. Following this, he advised that the film be dumped and the studio take a loss. Thankfully, the president, John Kelly, obliged Brooks's pleas and the film was released. However, it was only released at first in certain cities. 
Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York were the only cities the studio could risk releasing the film. But surprisingly, the end of summer soon saw the movie as a significant hit. And of course, the massive success that the film became overall made all who doubted its potential repent. Your program of Show's Prodigy. Now many people know that at the time Blazing Saddles was happening, it wasn't the only project in Brooks's hands. Instead, while screenwriting for Blazing Saddles, Brooks was also running the creation of a TV show, Your Show of Shows. The show didn't just come out of 10 air, but was inspired by Brooks's time in New York. During this time, Brooks encountered the talented Richard Pryor while performing at the Vanguard nightclub one fateful evening. Following this encounter, the idea of Your Show of Shows was stirred up in Brooks, and he did not hesitate to offer Richard Pryor a role in the show. Of course, Richard accepted this offer, thus birthing one of the most beautiful collaborations. Pryor soon became a significant influence in the show's success, and was also said to be the primary writer of most of Mongo's dialogue. The Gridiron Crew There is indeed no questioning the fact that one of the most exciting characters in Blazing Saddles is Mongo, a character portrayed by none other than Alex Karras, who is a football trailblazer outside acting. It reminds me that it is hard to believe theirs until you know about his accomplishments in the field. Alice Karras had been a successful player for 12 seasons in the NFL, and if that isn't enough, he was part of the All-Pro team for nine good times. Interestingly, he was a member of the NFL's All-Decade team in the 60s and a four-time pro bowler. Interesting, right? But how does such a good footballer end up in acting? After leaving the Detroit Lions, he decided to find a career in acting. Here, his most memorable acting role remains that of Mongo, a dumb strongman who runs the dirty errands of the villainous Hedley Lamar. While Mongo could not send Sheriff Bart packing, you should respect the person behind that character. Andrew Bergman. And so we come to another significant star in Blazing Saddles. Indeed, Andrew Bergman is one whose contribution to the success of Blazing Saddles is undisputed. Recognizing his central role in the film's overall success, his works were soon utilized for new content after the release of Blazing Saddles. One of the significant products of his works was a television series known as Black Bart. The pilot was aired on April 4, 1975. Interestingly, the show had Louis Gazette Jr. play the role of Bart. Even though the public never saw the show, it was still constantly filming under the contract clause of an official sequel, Musical Chairs. Looking at the musical aspects of Blazing Saddles, the film is unique in its approach to the music. This is all thanks to Brooks, who was bold enough to go against the regular usage of background music and instead opted to use program music. Carrying out his choice excellently, he chose to hire Count Basie, one of the best band leaders ever. Count Basie and his band took on the task of playing the song titled April in Paris in the movie. Also, as part of his musical creativity, Brooks went on to compose the film's theme song, which Frankie Lane later sang. The name is the same as yours. Now we are sorry to say that the aftermath of the release of Blazing Saddles is not all roses. They were just those challenges that rose from nowhere with a reason as little as the resemblance of a name. Do you recall that the villain in the film is named Hedley Lamar? Well, it sadly turns out that that name closely resembles that of a successful actress, Hedy Lamar. Interestingly, the famous actress had been on a contract with MGM, which started in the 1930s and lasted into the 1950s. The resemblance between the two names was so striking that Blazing Saddles Hedley Lamar even joked about the possibility of a lawsuit. Well, that possibility soon became a reality, though in the end, both parties were able to settle outside of the court. Child Arrived Brooks is a very talented screenwriter, but then we could also say that the success of Blazing Saddles had a little more to do with the birth of a child. Interestingly, Brooks' son Max was born just before Mel Brooks took up the Blazing Saddles projects. The son's birth influenced his taking on the project and his determination to make it work. He was short of cash then and needed to make the film work. According to him, he didn't want to take on any old project, but he also felt like Charles Dickens, seeing that he had to take on blazing saddles because of the money. This, however, did not stop him from pouring his passion without measure into the movie. 
uninvited guest. Unknown to many is an interesting scene when Blazing Saddles had an uninvited guest which nobody noticed. The scene involved a pursuit of Sheriff Bart and the Waco kid through the back lot where the movie was being shot. Following the scripting, the race had thrown every morning into a frenzy, and everyone turned right. But right there, there was just one guy who didn't turn. He was a pedestrian who accidentally got on set. He, however, got signed off and was allowed to stay. You've been fired. If you're familiar with Blazing Saddles, you would know Lily von Stupp, this character was played by Madeline Kahn, who was also booked for the film adaptation of Mame at the same time as for Blazing Saddles, Lily von Stupp. But here is the twist. Just a day before the filming of Blazing Saddles began, she was fired from Mame. Many speculated that she had put up a bad performance to get fired from Mame so she could focus on Blazing Saddles. We would never know if this is true or not. Mel's Perspective Following the success of the producers on Broadway, Brooks finds himself sharing his thoughts on Blazing Saddles and how it was possible to make it a success on the Great White Way. Here, Brooks admitted that while he had a plan, he wasn't sure if it would work anymore. Brooks was not sure if risque materials would fly anymore and if he'd be able to get away with it as a deed before. However, he made it clear that he would not try away from giving it a try. This highlights Brooks's decision to get Blazing Saddles to the point where it succeeded. He said, if I may say so. Now, great success comes with some moments of pride. Well, for Mel Brooks, he also had his moment. Following the high acclamation received from the movie Blazing Saddles, Brooks was bold enough to share his opinion about his work and ignored modesty. He considers Blazing Saddles the funniest film of all time, going for that to compare it to other comedic films like Some Like It Hot. Brooks said that he thinks Billy Wilder's film is hilarious, but not as amusing as his when compared scene for scene, as his work sure has more laughs. Here, he boldly says about Blazing Saddles, It's not right for me to say so, but I think this could be the funniest motion picture ever made. Making it work. Here is one behind-the-scenes moment that you might find interesting. While Mel Brooks made it clear that he initially intended to make Madeline Kahn play the role of Lily von Stupp, his meeting with Madeline Kahn took quite a dramatic turn on her arrival to read the role. Brooks asked to see her legs, and she immediately accused them of wrong intentions. However, Brooks explained that the character Kahn would play was that of a spoof on Marlene Dietrich, so Kahn needed nice legs. Following this explanation, she obliged with the condition that there was no touching. What do you think? Pryor's alternative. While you might have loved Cleavon Little in the role of Sheriff Bart, it would interest you to know that he was not the first choice for the role. The first candidate was known other than Richard Pryor, who Brooks considered the most blessed with talent. However, so many things stood in the way Brooks gave Richard Pryor the role. Fire was said to be a little too vulgar in his materials, and he was also said to be struggling with substance abuse. Brooks wanted to give him the role regardless of this, but met the opposition of the studio, which suggested Cleavon Little instead. Finally, considering how skillfully Cleavon read the lines, there was no standing in his way. Not something I can say. When playing roles that heavily contrast with one's personality, actors can be trusted to deliver, knowing that it is just acting. However, there are some exceptions to this, and an excellent example of this is the case of Burton Gilliam, who took on the role of Lyle. Lyle was supposed to be the bad guy's guy's henchman, and in one of the scenes, had to call Sheriff Bart a racial slur. Amazingly, Gilliam had a big struggle with this scene and could not use such sensitive words on Little until Little gave him the go-ahead himself, saying, if I thought you would say those words to me in any other situation, we'd go to Fist City. But this is all fun. Don't worry about it. On the cutting table. Not all scenes planned out by Brooks made it out to the public. While Brooks would have loved to be most creative with hilarious scenes, he got a lot of urge to cut out some humor scenes. Thus, not happy about this, Brooks had to cut out the most obscene scenes. One of those scenes includes Bart and Lily von Stupp in her dressing room. Here, Intending takes out the lights and says, Is it true what they say about you people? Bart's answer was hilarious as he said, I hate to disillusion you, ma'am, but you're sucking on my arm. John Wayne Interestingly, John Wayne was very close to being cast in Blazing Saddles. 
By including John Wayne, a legendary Western actor in the film, Brooks wanted to make the Western parody more original. He had accidentally met John on the Warner Brothers property and composed a short role for Wayne. Though Wayne rejected the role, he promised he'd be the first to see the movie when it gets out. Gene Wilder One exciting story about the relationship between Brooks and the legendary Gene Wilder that is not known is that they go way back, even working together on The Producers. Following this, Mel Brooks wanted to add Gene to Blazing Saddles. However, Gene gave him a condition to take over a script he was working on to make it a film. Mel agreed, and that script was the Oscar-nominated film Young Frankenstein, Word Art. While we all agree that the overall Blazing Saddles was a success, we must note that there are many things that Mel Brooks had to do to make it a success. Amongst them is his careful usage of words, referencing Mongo Santa Maria, a famous Cuban jazz musician. Mel also ensured to tell Frankie Lane a white lie that the film was dramatic and not satirical, so Frankie Lane wouldn't change the song. All of these and more were primarily responsible for the film's success. The controversial N-word scene. Blazing Saddles is known for its bold and controversial humor, and one scene that stirred significant debate was the use of the racial slur N-word in the film. The film's writers and Mel Brooks were well aware of the risks associated with such language, but they decided to include it to address racism and stereotypes head-on. The controversial scene occurs when Cleavon Little's character, Sheriff Bart, holds himself hostage by pointing a gun at his own head. He then confronts a group of racist townsfolk, using the racial slur to shock and disarm them. This scene was a commentary on the ignorance and prejudice of the time, and Mel Brooks believed that humor could be a powerful tool to expose and challenge racism. However, the use of the racial slur was met with mixed reactions. Some praised the film for its audacity in addressing racial issues, while others condemned it for perpetuating offensive language. The debate surrounding this scene continues to this day, highlighting the film's enduring impact on discussions of race and comedy. John Wayne's near involvement. One interesting fact that many people are not aware of is how close John Wayne came to being cast in Blazing Saddles. Mel Brooks had the idea of including the legendary Western actor John Wayne in the film to add authenticity to the Western parody. Brooks happened to meet John Wayne on the Warner Brothers property and even composed a short role specifically for Wayne. However, John Wayne ultimately turned down the role but promised to be the first to see the movie once it was completed. This anecdote highlights the intriguing behind-the-scenes moments and interactions that contributed to the making of Blazing Saddles, Gene Wilder's condition. Another lesser-known aspect of the film's production involves the relationship between Mel Brooks and the legendary Gene Wilder. The two had a history of working together on the producers, and Brooks wanted to include Gene Wilder in Blazing Saddles. However, Gene Wilder had a condition for his participation. He asked Mel Brooks to take over a script he was working on and turn it into a film. Mel agreed to the deal, and that script turned out to be the Oscar-nominated film Young Frankenstein. This collaboration between Brooks and Wilder is a testament to their creative partnership and the unique dynamics behind the scenes. Word art and song manipulation. While the overall success of Blazing Saddles is widely acknowledged, there were numerous behind-the-scenes efforts that Mel Brooks undertook to ensure its success. One such effort involved the careful use of words and song manipulation. For instance, Brooks made a reference to Mongo Santa Maria, a famous Cuban jazz musician, as a subtle nod to add a touch of authenticity to the film's soundtrack. Additionally, he told Frankie Lane, who sang the film's theme song, a white lie by describing the movie as dramatic rather than satirical. This clever manipulation of words and music contributed to the film's overall impact and comedic success. The controversial N-word scene, Blazing Saddles is known for its bold and controversial humor, and one scene that stirred significant debate was the use of the racial slur N-word in the film. The film's writers and Mel Brooks were well aware of the risks associated with such language, but they decided to include it to address racism and stereotypes head-on. The controversial scene occurs when Cleveland Little's character, Sheriff Bart, holds himself hostage by pointing a gun at his own head. He then confronts a group of racist townsfolk, using the racial slur to shock and disarm them. 
This scene was a commentary on the ignorance and prejudice of the time, and Mel Brooks believed that humor could be a powerful tool to expose and challenge racism. However, the use of the racial slur was met with mixed reactions. Some praised the film for its audacity in addressing racial issues, while others condemned it for perpetuating offensive language. The debate surrounding this scene continues to this day, highlighting the film's enduring impact on discussions of race and comedy. The Impact on Future Comedies Blazing Saddles is often cited as a trailblazer in the world of comedy. Its irreverent humor, satirical take on racism, and boundary-pushing gags have influenced countless comedians and filmmakers over the years. The film's success and willingness to tackle taboo subjects paved the way for a new era of comedy that challenged societal norms and conventions. Comedians like Richard Pryor, who was considered for a role in the film, drew inspiration from Blazing Saddles and its fearless approach to humor. The film's impact can also be seen in the work of other renowned comedians such as Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, and Sasha Baron Cohen, all of whom have pushed the boundaries of comedy and social commentary in their own unique ways. What do you think of behind-the-scenes facts in Blazing Saddles? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.